ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm John Weeks and this is The Leader. As strikes continue to impact public transport, waste services and even major ports in the UK, the latest action announced today could potentially cripple our criminal justice system. Barristers have voted for an indefinite strike in their ongoing row with the government over funding for the industry, which the Criminal Bar Association has described as collapsed and disintegrating. It's accused the government of not properly funding the criminal justice system, which currently faces a backlog of close to 60,000 cases. The CBA has warned without improved funding for legal aid barristers, many more will leave to work in other areas of law. Joining me now to go through it is the Evening Standard's courts correspondent, Tristan Kirk. So Tristan, can you give us a breakdown of what this strike action is all about and why it's happening? Well, this is strike action that's the culmination of a very long term dispute between the barristers, criminal barristers and uh, the legal profession on one side and the government essentially on the other side about the funding of legal aid cases. So obviously legal aid is is what's offered in criminal cases to anyone who can't afford to pay for their own legal representation to make sure that they have a solicitor and a barrister if needed to represent them at court. Well, the barristers and specifically the criminal bar association say that over a long period of time there has been massive underfunding of the legal aid system cuts of around about 28% to the legal aid budget over a number of years and that's left their industry basically on its knees and in need of urgent redress there was an independent report that came out in November last year recommending at least a 15% increase to legal aid fees and for that increase to be applied urgently as soon as possible so that there is money getting into the system. The reason for that is because not only are barristers being dramatically underpaid but that's causing them to leave the profession entirely to go to other areas of law or to take up completely different professions and so that dwindling number of legal aid lawyers has meant that the justice system at the moment is in a a level of crisis and in need of basically being resurrected. And I understand barristers are calling for a 15% rise in legal fees. What's the government's response to that? The government offered that 15% increase on fees to come into effect at the end of next month. Now, that's almost a year after the independent review came to its conclusions. And quite crucially, that 15% increase that's being offered is not being applied to cases that are in the existing backlog of cases, which is approaching 60,000 cases in the backlog. So that means that criminal barristers say that they're not going to be paid increased fees on all those existing cases already in the system, and so won't feel the, the benefits of any fee increase until many months and possibly years to come. On top of that, they say that a 25% fee increase will be more appropriate given the years of underfunding that we've seen. It all seems to come down to a huge backlog of cases, nearly 60,000. In part, that's due to the pandemic, but that backlog has actually been growing since before the COVID outbreak, hasn't it? Yes, the backlog is a source of incredible soreness and frustration in the legal profession and, and for the people in the criminal justice system, victims, witnesses and defendants. It was around about the 30,000 mark um, there's, there's always going to be a backlog in the system, but it was around about 30,000 in 2018. And a deliberate decision was made by the government at that time to reduce the amount of funding in the system, essentially, and the amount of sitting days that, that courts could do. And that meant that the backlog was deliberately allowed to grow. It had reached around about 40,000 plus when the pandemic hit. And then obviously the effect of the pandemic was to largely shut down areas of the court. And so it has rather supercharged that growing of the backlog to what it is now, which is nearly 60,000 cases. So when we look at the backlog of cases and that 60,000 number, there's a temptation, I think, from a lot of people in government to blame it entirely on the effects of the pandemic and COVID, when in reality, it was something that was a growing problem before the pandemic even began. 
So has legal aid as a sort of sector been hit by austerity measures over the years? Or has this lack of funding simply been because of money being prioritised elsewhere? Well, austerity might be the driving force behind it, but I think for a lot of years, criminal legal aid, and uh, legal aid in general actually, and the legal profession has been seen by various elements within various governments as somewhere that could legitimately be targeted for fairly massive cuts in public spending. Lots of people will have seen in the past those stories about terrible criminals, the the worst of the worst, receiving legal aid money to be able to defend their cases, to be properly represented in court. Well, that's been part of, I think, a concerted effort from some politicians who saw legal aid as, as an area that they wanted to radically cut back on. And so when, when you do that, you don't just cut back on the notorious criminals, the, 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 the ones at the top end, the ones who make the, the headlines. You cut back on all people who need and rely on legal aid spending to be able to properly function within the justice system. So defendants who have no money or, or have very little money rely on that legal aid system to be able to put forward their defence at court, to offer the proper mitigation, to challenge prosecution evidence and to effectively take part in, in any criminal trial. And when you start slashing that legal aid budget, year on year, cutting back on it, it means you get less barristers, you get less people able to represent defendants, and you get massive delays coming into the system. Let's take a break now. In part two, Tristan describes the dire conditions some barristers have to work in. It's not uncommon to see the the ceilings fallen in or the walls have to be propped up. So, Tristan, the CBA are saying the government needs to properly fund the criminal justice system, saying it's collapsed and disintegrating. Is that purely down to barristers leaving or are there other problems they're referencing there? When the barristers talk about a collapsing system and and the essential destruction of the criminal justice system and, and the legal aid system that props it up, I don't think they're prone to exaggeration. I think they are accurately describing what is an incredibly dire situation within our courts right now. The figures back it up entirely. There are lawyers, barristers and solicitors who are leaving the profession in their drove, heading off into civil law or leaving law entirely because over time criminal legal aid has become unsustainable as a professional career. The funding just simply hasn't been there. And so it's it's unsurprising that people are going elsewhere where they'd be better remunerated for what are very specialist skills. There's a good comparison often drawn between um, barristers and doctors or, or surgeons. You wouldn't go into a hospital for an operation with just somebody who does surgery for a hobby or has read a few medical textbooks and thinks they're going to have a go, you would go in with the best of the best, you would hope, somebody who has spent years training for the job and gaining those specific skills. Well, it's the same in in law. You don't just want somebody who has half an idea what they're doing or even worse, representing yourself. You need somebody who spent years studying to have those specialist skills to be able to take part in what is a very complex world. And so that's also set against the backdrop of underfunding across the board in justice. And so I'm the courts correspondent and I go around London's court and and you see the buildings that they have to work in, which are terribly underfunded. The repair bill across the board is is supposed to be somewhere in the region of a billion pounds. And so it's not uncommon to see the, the ceilings fallen in or the walls have to be propped up or courtrooms have to be shut down for a variety of fairly mundane reasons relating to maintenance. So why has the system suffered this neglect from government? And could there be any agenda behind it? I think it's been an easy win to cut money from criminal justice, from the justice sector for far too many years. It's not an area that the general public 
think they are going to be involved in. It never is really, is it? You only know that you're going to be involved in the justice system when it actually happens to you. And so it's not exactly a vote winner to put significant amount of money into justice. That's accentuated even further when you talk about putting money into legal aid, because legal aid is in the colloquial terms money for criminals and so you're asking the public to support extra funds going into defending the people accused of crimes and sometimes the most heinous crimes in my opinion it's an erroneous approach to take it's wrong and and it's led us to this pretty dire situation that we're in now but it's it's an easy one when if you're faced with a choice if you've made it that way to put spending into health or education or public transport or justice, then I think we can all guess which one is the easiest route because most people aren't involved in the justice system directly, but we all obviously rely on it as a pillar of our society. So this is obviously quite significant strike action starting next month. Can you see the government agreeing to the CBA's demands? I can't see an agreement coming anytime soon from this particular government. As we know, this is a dying government. It's basically here until the start of September when the new leader is appointed. And I think for everyone's sake, it's to be hoped that there is a clean sweep at the Ministry of Justice, if only to bring in new people who might be able to negotiate a different position on this industrial action. The Criminal Bar Association have shown time and again that their resolve is pretty strong and this escalation of action today shows that they're not going away in terms of demanding more from the Ministry of Justice and the ministers, having changed recently, have been fairly entrenched in their view that what they are offering is the only thing that's on the table. So I think to get out of this situation and and to, to find some sort of compromise that moves us forward, then we're going to need new ministers in in the in the department perhaps a new minister of justice to replace dominic raab and then we will hopefully find a way forward and do you think this latest action will put people off going into law and aspiring to become a barrister well definitely that's half the problem really is that criminal justice has been dramatically underfunded for so many years that now the numbers of people who are actually going into it in the first place is coming down and and the numbers of people who are leaving it for other areas is going up if you were a newly qualified lawyer and you were assessing your options as to where to practice you hear reports of a hundred thousand pounds plus being offered for newly qualified lawyers in the civil sector in in commercial law they go to work in nice comfortable offices and work in courts that are often well maintained and nice places to work in contrast you talk about a newly qualified criminal legal aid barrister earning somewhere in the region of 12200 pounds per year in their first three years and that's at a time when they'll be saddled with enormous debts from just qualifying in the first place and add to that having to go into the crown courts of this country which are in states of repair that is less than ideal and in some places absolutely dire you can see why the commercial and uh, civil law would be much more attractive prospects and that's why in this particular dispute the government offering just the bare minimum of a 15% increase on the fees isn't really good enough and is not doing the the business when it comes to ending this strike. The CBA are talking about 25% and that's just to rectify past years of cuts and destruction to the legal aid budget. So if you ask my view, the government's got to do more to end this dispute. There's more on this story in the Evening Standard newspaper and at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. Thanks for listening. We're back tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock.